Did your ex-wife divorce you for really crappy reasons? I often hear this from my clients and from my viewers. They just don't get why she left when they didn't actually do anything that wrong, right? Like, yes, sure, they made mistakes, but they're human. They didn't do anything that was that big of a deal. Nothing that was worthy or warranted a divorce. This is one of the ways, the main ways, how divorce changes a man. It leaves him feeling confused, bitter, and deeply mistrustful towards women. I'm Rachel Sloan. I'm a master NLP practitioner and a certified life coach. And I work with men like you, men who have gone through a divorce, trying to move on and don't want to get stuck in that confusion, stuck in that bitterness, living a life of mistrust. I help my clients make sense of the past so that they can have meaningful relationships and enjoy connection and possibility again in the future. I hope on this channel to help you do the same. Make sure that you stick around through the end of this video because after we define what's actually happening here when she leaves for crappy reasons and what it does, how it changes you, I'm actually going to tell you what you can do in this situation when her reasons for divorce suck and it's impacting your life for the worse. Please comment on this video. I love hearing from you and your comments mean a lot to the other viewers as well. Okay, here's what divorce looks like. You have the woman and she's like, hey, I'm not happy. You don't understand me. I want more. You're too controlling. You don't help around the house. You don't give me enough respect, affection, appreciation, empathy, caring, companionship, et cetera. Okay, and then we've got you and you're like, okay. I didn't realize that this was so bad. Didn't realize it was such a big deal. Let's work on this, right? I can do better. I want to learn. I love you. Let's go to counseling. Her. No, I'm done. I'm filing for divorce. It's too late. And you are like, what the fuck just happened? I see this far, far too often. It's confusing. It sucks. And it makes no sense. So often men tell me this, look, I know I wasn't perfect by any means, but come on. I didn't kill anybody. I never hit her. I didn't cheat on her. I didn't gamble away our entire finances. I drink a little, but I'm not an addict. How can she divorce me for this? I'm a good man. I'm a good husband. I'm a good father. Most of the men that I talk to have a list. Often it's subconscious, but it's in there. And it's a list of acceptable reasons to divorce someone, right? And those lists can be a little different person to person, but they're usually things that are pretty extreme, right? Murder, abuse, for some people, it's infidelity or certain financial situations or gambling. There's this mental list of things that it's like, okay, if she divorced me for that, I could understand, but I didn't do those things, right? Only a horrible person would do those things. Only a monster would do those things. I have thoughts about that too, because I don't actually agree with that thought. But a lot of men are thinking this way, right? Only, only a horrible person would kill somebody or beat their wives. I'm not a horrible person. I didn't do those things. So why is she treating me like a monster by filing for divorce? When you have this list in your head, these reasons that are acceptable for divorcing somebody, and you notice that you didn't do any of those things, and yet your wife is filing for divorce, this whole train of thought leads you down two really nasty roads. First, it sows a lot of seeds of self-doubt. Does she really think I'm as bad as somebody who beats his wife? Really? Is that how she sees me? Am I that hard to live with? Am I that bad of a person? Your self-confidence starts to waver when you think like this. If it goes on, it can even really begin to crumble. The second nasty path your brain goes down is you really start to doubt her, right? What happened to the woman that you married? Where did she go? Who is this person in your house? How could anybody, how could a good person do this to somebody they loved? How could she do it to her own children, right? You end up concluding, well, she probably never loved me, right? She's just been using me this whole time and I don't even know her. Both the self-doubt and the feelings of betrayal and mistrust often start to grow even worse when you try to save the marriage, when you push for counseling, for therapy, for reconciling, you try to prove to her, you say, hey, look, these reasons, this is not enough to warrant divorce. Let's work on this. I'm willing to work on this. If she doubles down on her decision, which she usually does, and she often gets nasty and accusatory in the process, her continued aggressions, which are often unwarranted and often paint a very unpleasant and unfair negative picture of you throughout the marriage that adds to your already painful feelings of both self-doubt and shame 
And they also confirm that the woman you loved is not the person you thought she was. This is a lose-lose cycle for you. You lose faith in yourself, you lose faith in the woman you love, and perhaps you lose faith in women in general. All of this sets you up perfectly to feel despair, helpless, hopeless, and depressed. This is one of the ways that I often see divorce changing a man for the worse. So from where you're sitting, the solution probably seems obvious. She shouldn't file for divorce without having a good reason, right? That typically leads to anger, frustration, and then ultimately despair because you can't do anything about it, right? You can't change it. So in just a moment, I'm going to tell you what you can do. But first, here is just a quick recap of this cycle that so often happens. Okay, so first, women have lots of reasons for filing for divorce. To you, they probably look like really shitty reasons, especially if you have kids and are willing to work on the relationship. So then you seek to make her understand that, help her see that she's making a bad choice for bad reasons, and she pushes back, becoming aggressive, accusatory, or even cruel. The end result where this path leads you is not only a divorce that you don't want, but also endless questioning inside your own self, inside your own brain, questioning yourself and your own worth, questioning her character, and maybe questioning how you chose such a bad character, and perhaps questioning the wisdom of ever trusting a woman again. All of that doubt and betrayal leads you down a path that ultimately ends up in despair, depression, and loneliness. So what can you actually do about any of this? To break free from the cycles of doubt and mistrust, to get off of these paths, the one powerful thing you can do is take a big step back, a step out of your own preconceptions, and look at what is really happening. She didn't leave you for the reasons that she gave you. She left you because she felt alone and she didn't know how to reconnect. She likely tried to reconnect in ways that didn't work, right? They probably didn't take into account your needs or your fears or your desires, just as you have likely tried to connect with her in ways that didn't work. I'm saying this, right? That the reasons she gave you for the divorce aren't the actual reasons, but she probably doesn't know that. She likely doesn't know the real reason that she's leaving. She doesn't identify it as feeling alone. Most of us in Western society are so out of touch with our deeper emotional needs that we feel anger or frustration and we just think that's it. We're angry. We have no awareness of the underlying fear or pain that is always behind anger. But it is. It's always there. So she's not just this like evil, angry bitch who's like lying and manipulating and breaking your heart on purpose and stealing your kids. She might've done those things, right? She may very well have broken your heart and stolen your kids, but it's not because she's like an evil, crazy, manipulative bitch. It's because she's not been able to look at, to tolerate, or even see her own painful underlying emotions. She only felt her nervous system's defensive fight or flight reaction, which said, he's the threat, attack him, blame him and escape him so that you can feel better. When we feel alone, and if you want to explore this, I I get into it in much more depth than last week's video. The link is here above. When we feel alone, that is historically on an evolutionary base, a life or death experience for a human. Being alone for most of human history was a death sentence. Even now for children, for infants, being left alone means that you die. So the human nervous system responds very strongly to the experience of being alone, to feeling isolated or lonely or disconnected. When you're not aware that that's happening, you just feel the response. The reaction is a fight or flight response. It's resolve the threat, stop being alone, get out of this situation and into something different and better. She might truly believe that you are the problem when the problem is actually within her. The problem is her own unseen, unprocessed and intolerable emotions that she doesn't know how to look at, much less communicate so that those needs can be met. When you go along with her, when you jump into the anger with her, you are also failing to see the fear and the pain that are underneath her anger. You're also failing to see the fear and the pain that are underneath your 
anger. You're falling into the same trap she's in. And now you have very limited choices when you're just living in the anger and you're not looking at what's underneath for you or for her, you only have a couple of options. Either you're the asshole she's painting you to be, or she is this like evil, crazy, manipulative bitch who's out to ruin your life. We know where that leads, right? That leads down that path of self-doubt, of mistrust that ultimately leaves you feeling hopeless, depressed, and probably far more deeply alone than even either of you felt in your marriage itself. That's the same battle she's fighting. You are both thinking, you're both giving into the illusion that the fight is against each other, but it's not. What really needs to be addressed is what's happening in here, the underlying pain, the underlying fear that you're feeling in response to her actions. And for her, it's to address those same things. But again, we have to always stay in our own lane. There are things you can control and things you cannot. What you can control in this case is how you look at this situation and what you do about your underlying fear and pain. You can take care of that for yourself so that you can step out of that fight or flight response, out of that anger. And when you do that, it opens up the possibility of looking at her, even when she's being nasty and doing awful and difficult things, look at her with a lens of some compassion. Now, I just want to be clear before we end here, I'm not justifying any behaviors. It doesn't make the divorce okay. It doesn't mean that her choices around custody or fighting to keep you away from kids or taking more of your money it doesn't mean that any of those actions are okay. And it doesn't mean that any of the things she accuses you of or says to you that that kind of emotional or verbal abuse is okay. Understanding where it comes from, seeing the pain and the fear under her anger doesn't make the things she does in anger okay. It doesn't justify them. What it does is it helps you separate out the human that she is from the bad, the negative actions that she's taking. And none of that is for her, right? How you see her doesn't matter for her. It's for you. Because when you see her as this manipulative, bad, evil, cruel, crazy person, when you define her by the actions she's taking, by her anger, it leads you down that path, right? It leads you into the self-doubt, the mistrust, the depression, the despair, right? But when you see her as a human who hurts, who's afraid, and who's doing horrible things because of it, it frees you from that path. It allows you to stop taking it personally, to see yourself in a more honest and clear light, and to open to the possibility of connecting with other people in the future because you're seeing them as human and you're separating that out from their actions. Then your relationships really become about choices. You know, there's certain actions people take that you might not want in your life, but you can choose who you want to be in relationship with based on the human underneath. And then you can set your boundaries around those actions, but you don't have to have all of this emotional drama that leads to depression wrapped up in it. I'm going to close by saying that this is complicated stuff. And if you're having a strong reaction to her reasons for divorce, there's likely a lot under the surface. And looking at those underlying fears, those underlying pain points for yourself is going to require a lot of courage and a lot of honesty. But I know you can do it because I see men do it every single day. And I can't really describe how freeing it is when they get there. So I hope that you will be courageous and you will look inward and you'll be curious about what is deeper for you, what is underneath the anger and what do those parts that are afraid or in pain in you need in order to heal and move through this in a way that leaves your life open with possibility instead of taking you down that narrow, painful path that leads to hopelessness and despair. I very much hope that you found this video helpful. I love hearing from you in the comments. I'd love to hear about your experience with this. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, turn on those notifications. I've got new content coming out each week. So you'll be the first to know. I'll see you in the next video.